Mila sits at the corner of Michigan and Lake, and the Carbide and Carbine building sits directly north. And treating the block as a whole was very important to us, and where we sighted Mila and pushed it all the way to the corner of Michigan and Lake and created that separation between the two buildings. The Carbide and Carbon building was so important to be respectful of, both in the materiality, the scale of it, how the base is treated and the datums that occur at the, at the ground plane. We chose a glass for the building that has a slight uh, blue-green tint to it, echoing the, the kind of green terracotta of the Carbide and Carbon building. You also notice the piers that occur on the historic building and this verticality that occurs above the base. And we picked up upon that with this vertical rhythm of spandrel glass that hide, you know, systems that hide mechanical systems and columns and that kind of echo in a more modern way that verticality expressed on carbon and carbon. It wasn't an easy site to solve for, and it was actually only a six-story building that sat on this site, but those foundations were designed for a much taller building. I don't think we just go back and say, well, we did this on the other projects, so let's do the same thing here. We always draw it, build a model, physically have to see what, what it is we're studying, just so you can walk through all the steps to get to a final solution. Just letting them see that we have studied all these options and we suggest and we recommend you choose this option. The existing building was designed to be a taller building. That left very extensive foundations in the site when that existing building was demolished, basically verifying a lot of what was in the drawings. And then there were modifications that were done to the building structure itself to remove as little as possible as we worked on the project. Mila began at kind of an interesting time in the growth of Chicago. There were two dynamics that really made this project more viable than ever, is that there was a return to people living in the loop and living in the east side of the loop. And with the advent of Millennium Park, that brought renewed attention to this part of Michigan Avenue. A great site in Chicago. Its relationship to the park, to Michigan Avenue, couldn't be better. The curtain wall offered us the opportunity to do something in the classic modernist tradition. The balconies on this building, also an important part of the composition, are partially recessed in an effort to avoid the diving board balcony look. Once you get up to a certain height, I find, you know, all the views are good here. We chose to locate the amenity floor at the top of the building, and then we located the outdoor space here with a pool and an outdoor deck, which has amazing views of Millennium Park and also takes advantage of that south light. That pedestrian traffic and that retail component was very important to this site. So how we treated the base, making it very pedestrian friendly and also very visible. And by elevating the parking and keeping it off the face of Michigan Avenue by screening it properly, creating a very enticing retail experience at Michigan Avenue. The other advantage of creating that separation between our friend to the north and our building is we were able to create a green space on top of the podium level uh, to provide light and air and views to the building, but also an open space that residents can use. And we work with a very talented lighting designer, Dave McCarroll of KGM Lighting. The 11 miles of tubes that hang down in this clear story space that become a light sculpture and they're able to be programmed and screens the parking. And complements the, the design of the building. Eventually we wound up with a circular car ramp that got cars up to third, fourth, and fifth floors. Everything's well insulated, waterproof. Usually the biggest challenge is the ones that no one can see because if you do it right, no one knows it's there. The retail was extremely important, being on both Michigan and around the corner on Lake. And then the residential entry tucks back behind on Garland Court, which almost feels like a lane that you would see in London. The metalwork at the base and the framing of the, the retail entries and the bay windows, that color is meant to be you know, a little brighter and a little lighter and to draw people into the building. The John Buck Company and John himself, we owe a great deal of gratitude trusting us to do this project. They're one of the most important developers in Chicago probably for the last 40 years. This project was one of three or four key projects early on that really established as, as, as a key player in Chicago.